task force hearing, we explored how Congress itself, over the past many decades, has acted or not acted in ways that have tended to cede its legislative power to the executive branch. It's contrary to our founders' original intentions as well. Our hearing today focuses on examples in which the President has ex exercised sheer will to wrest legislative authority from Congress. President Obama's actions in planning to grant amnesty and work permits to millions of illegal immigrants without congressional authorization and in unilaterally extending statutory Obamacare deadlines and spending un unappropriated funds to pay subsidies to health insurers are two case studies in the modern abuse of domestic executive power. While the President has defined constitutional powers in foreign and military affairs, he does not have any legislative power under the Constitution, not outside his power to veto legislation presented to him. Consequently, presidential abuses of power in domestic affairs are particularly grave threats to the individual liberty protected by the Constitution. I'll focus on the example of immigration in my remarks. Beginning on March 2, 2011, the Obama administration began a series of memos that have radically transformed immigration law without a single vote from Congress. March 2nd was the first of what were called the Morton Memos. Now, I recall reading the Morton Memos, and I recall discussion and hearing here with uh, Janet Napolitano. I remember her description of prosecutorial discretion, and uh, I recall that they said in them some of the memos, on an individual basis only, was repeated something like seven times in one memo. But President Obama's theory that prosecutorial discretion, always, which always previously was applicable only on a case-by-case -case basis, could be categorical in application, in other words, by groups. I successfully offered an appropriations amendment to block funding of the Morton memos on June 7, 2012. But not to be deterred, the President went further eight days later, on June 15, 2012, with the creation of the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or known as DACA. DACA took an even more radical step toward the Obama administration's destruction of the traditional understanding of prosecutorial discretion. With DACA, the President claimed prosecutorial discretion not only was categorically applicable, but further, there should be benefits conferred. Prosecutorial discretion was always understood to be both individualized on a case-by-case -case basis and simply a decision to not act. DACA completely changed that with an entire program created to process people for positive benefits as opposed to simply refraining from action by the government. I also offered a successful amendment to strip funds from DACA and the Morton memos on June 5, 2013. In November of 2014, President Obama unilaterally and unconstitutionally created a program that would suspend immigration laws for potentially over 5 million people who are in this country illegally. The President could have urged Congress to enact a statute to create such a program under law, but he did not do so. Even when his party controlled both houses of Congress, he did not do so. And despite claiming the situation is urgent, the President didn't act unilaterally until November 20th, 2014. Whether or not the President delayed action until November of 2014 for political reasons, he knew the actions he ultimately did take are unconstitutional. In particular, the President said publicly, and I quote, What I've been able to do is make a legal argument, which is that given the resources we have, what we can do is then carve out the DREAM Act, folks, but if we start broadening that, to DAPA, for example, then essentially I would be ignoring the law in a way that I think would be very difficult to defend it legally. Putting aside the legality of the President's unilateral action regarding DREAM Act folks, clearly the President's statement regarding the illegality of expanding on that program was true then, and it is true today. As the Washington Post's own fact checker wrote recently, referring to the very same quotes, quote, it's clear from the interviews that the President was being asked about specific actions that ended deportations of a subset of illegal immigrants, close quote, which is precisely the type of action he took in November. And as the Washington Post fact checker concluded, quote, previously the President said that was not possible using evocative language that he is not a king or the emperor. Apparently he's changed his mind, close quote. 
And indeed, a week after he announced his immigration law suspension program, President Obama announced in his own words, quote, the fact that I just took an action to change the law, close quote. I think that took place in Chicago. The president claims the concept of prosecutorial discretion allows him to permit at least 5 million people who are here illegally to cut in line to stay here under suspension of the immigration laws by bypassing the legal process that's being used by millions of people and with great financial expense to them under the law. That number, 5 million people, is staggering. And under its weight, the concept of prosecutorial discretion, which is intended to encompass individual case-by-case -case determinations, flattens to nothing. The 5 million people for whom President Obama wanted the immigration laws suspended, plus the 600,000 or so provided amnesty under DACA, constitute nearly 50 percent of the size of the entire unauthorized immigrant population in the United States. Further, the number of people for whom the immigration laws would be unilaterally suspended by the President's actions is larger than the roughly 4.2 million people today who are, fam who are family members of U.S. citizens and permanent residents who have paid thousands of dollars for approved green card petitions and who are currently awaiting for their green cards to become available. Under the President's unilateral action, more people would be allowed to essentially cut in line for work authorization than are currently and legally waiting in line for such authorization because the resources that would normally be devoted to processing legal applicants would be diverted to processing illegal applicants. That's a shocking abuse of executive power. I look forward to hearing from all of our witnesses here today and I recognize the ranking member of the task force, Mr. Cohen from Tennessee, for his opening statement.